So Nintendo has revealed that the scale of the marketing campaign for Splatoon matches that of Mario Kart 8. Nintendo has, quote, the utmost confidence in the potential of Splatoon and believes it can attract gamers who wouldn't have considered a Wii U before. Yeah, it's funny that, that they're saying that because I, I found out today that there's some like yogurt chain in Canada, a uh, frozen yogurt chain that has uh, Splatoon themed flavors. So Is they, it really? Yeah, uh, it's called- Splatoon this whole time has been reminding me so much of Trix yogurt. Like from the moment it was announced. Really? I guess yeah, the colors, so I'm, the I'm kind of not surprised. Thing. Yeah, the whole color combos. I swear, some of them are just straight from. <laughs> but anyway, I'm kind of. That's, and the that's rabbits. Funny. Hmm. Yeah, they were yeah. originally going to be rabbits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. That's kind of. Uh, I'm kind of not that surprised actually. Then that there are these yogurt chains with Splatoon merchandise. Yeah, I, I honestly haven't seen Nintendo pushing one of their brands out there this hard since we came out. They're trying to put Splatoon everywhere, which is good. They should. It's about time. But man, it's. I wonder if it's too little too late, though. Yeah, I love the confidence of Nintendo here, but I I don't think it's realistic to think that Splatoon can sell on the level of Mario Kart 8. You know, Mario Kart 8 sold about 5 million copies so far, and I don't see Splatoon coming anywhere near that. Yeah, I mean, that's an amazing attach rate for Wii U, which has only sold about 9 million units, so more than 50% of, Mario Kart own, of Wii U owners own Mario Kart. Yeah, I mean, and I think it'd be great if Splatoon hit, like, 20%. I don't even, I don't expect that to happen, but I think that'd be like best case scenario. Yeah, I mean, if one of Nintendo's most storied IPs can't, you know, make the Wii U take off and fly off store shelves, I don't think a, a new untested IP is going to do it. I mean, Splatoon, For sure. I, I, I love what I played it at E3 last year, and I mean, it's, it's shaping up to be great, but uh, I just don't see it. Is it is great. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, actually, come to think of it, our review, when you're listening to this, our review is going to be out and uh, it's it's a fantastic game. I I think it's a must buy for Wii U owners, but I I agree that, you know, not all Wii U owners are going to get it. Probably not even close to 50 percent at all. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, it, it it's billing itself is, is this four on four multiplayer shooter, which is a good modern step that Nintendo needs to take because their first party library doesn't really have something like that. But on the other hand, they're still shooting themselves in the foot with their, you know, their typical kind of anti-progress stances like, you know, no online chat between even between friends, you know, yeah. just just in an effort to protect the kids. And, and you know, their their online structure is so limiting that it just makes me think that they're they're kind of, yeah, they're shooting they're shooting themselves in the foot by making a game like this, but not really embracing its potential wholeheartedly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and on the flip side, if they're not going to go all in on online multiplayer, they could at least put more effort into local multiplayer. Uh, since Mario yeah. Kart and and Smash mm -hmm. seem to have gone on the local wave pretty well and then done well for themselves with it, even without chat, you know, for example. For sure. I mean, local multiplayer is one of the big things that I touch upon in my review. That there's only one way to play it. It's like a ba it's like a battle mode where you shoot balloons and that's it. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. It's an excellent mode, but after half an hour, forty minutes of playing it, you're gonna want to do something else yeah like no yeah. co-op against bots even like that would be something yeah. and I, i'm also a little skeptical that this is going to sell we use anyway because you know it's one thing if this were like one of a stellar lineup for this year but you know splatoon is like the one noteworthy wii u game to come out in the last six months well to that i would say given how hard nintendo is marketing this especially towards younger audiences with that whole birthday truck thing that they're doing and the these yogurt merchandise and by getting the squirt gun at target and stuff like that I mean, they are, to their credit, I think doing a really good job of getting the brand out there in the public consciousness of a lot of younger audiences. And I think that is a really good thing. I think, you know, if, if they can hype the game up enough in those audiences, a lot of those kids who don't have a Wii U yet, but really, really are excited for Splatoon are gonna get us are gonna get a Wii U. And I think I think they're lucky in that sense that they haven't done a whole lot of advertising in the past of their other games. That means when they do it for Splatoon, a lot of kids are gonna notice and wanna buy a Wii U. But you know, it it also means that they've had this whole audience that in the past they've been missing out on a lot. Yeah. And I guess that's what I'm hoping for, but it seems more like a tipping point game to me where you add it onto the pile of already uh, an already great lineup and, and, and it tips yeah, people sure. over the edge and we'll see. Uh, maybe maybe enough kids want Mario Kart and Smash Brothers that it'll do the job anyway, but uh, you know, those games are over six months old by now, so we'll see. Speaking of Splatoon though, there was a new Iwata Asks that went up this week, which revealed a ton of info about Splatoon. The development team revealed that the game was only 10% finished at E3 last year. Um, they spent the last the time since then adding new weapons and stages and balancing the game. 
They've also spent a lot of time working on the single player mode and they really, really hope that you will play it because it's a great single player mode. Uh, what, what we've seen, or what I've seen, I mean, Colin's seen everything, so I mean, he maybe he can comment on this more than I can. <laughs> Colin but, has but, seen some things. But the, the, the single player mode looks like it's kind of got that wacky quirkiness that you would expect from mm -hmm. classic Nintendo, uh, and they haven't really put out a new game like that since Pikmin. Right, 14 years ago. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, new characters in this new wacky, quirky, never before seen on a Nintendo console sort of environment. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know how much I can actually talk about that because technically the embargo isn't up when we're recording this, although when it's released, the embargo will be. So I'll, I'll just keep my mouth shut anyway. I guess read Colin's review. Well, some of it actually isn't covered in the review, the, the single player mode stuff that it sounds like you're talking about. But yeah, it is that great Nintendo quirkiness. Um, it's really wonderful. I, I could not put it down, so I had a really great time, and I'm I, after playing it, I'm, I'm with the developers here. I really I really hope that you guys who are listening play the single-player mode, because it's a fantastic, fantastic experience, I think. So, Colin, I have a question for you. Uh, with the game only being 10% complete, you know, less than a year ago, and they've do you feel like they've had to rush the development at all? Because we know some of the features, like matchmaking and custom games, won't even be available until a few months later. So do you feel like it was rushed? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think I think it was rushed in that there's a lot of content that's clearly uh, not currently there that they're adding later, which they're adding it for free. Um, well, I, I guess I fine. should say, I think... does it feel incomplete at launch? Well, right, here's the thing. I don't think it does. Okay. It definitely feels like they've they've taken the idea of quality over quantity to heart. And you can tell that there was more stuff planned that they decided to scrap, but they worked on the content that they didn't decide to scrap thoughtfully enough that it still feels like a complete game. You can tell that once they decided we're gonna save these modes for later, they doubled down on making what content was in the game really, really good. So in that sense, it's really an exercise of quality over quantity, and I think it feels complete, even though um, the amount of content in it is lesser than it will be come August. It, it's funny that you mentioned we were talking about it that way, because when you look back at the comments from the Iwata asks, uh, they're kind of in response to Iwata saying, you know, I got the impression that to people who are watching at E3, it seemed like Splatoon was already a complete game last year. And it seems like you're you're sort of confirming that sentiment that even though that all the content isn't there, what is there is really really good, really really polished, and really really fun. Absolutely, it's funny. It's funny that uh, he says that. We know now that last year at E3, all they had was the one weapon and the one stage that was there. Yeah. I guess a lot of the people who played it kind of assumed that was just the demo weapon and the demo stage, and other stuff was already there. But no, that was all that they had for the game. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. What they have is so, so solid and so much fun that it doesn't feel like there's any dearth of material there uh, to play with. It really does feel complete, which I was concerned about going into it. But now that I've played it so much, I, I'm really satisfied. Yeah, that's good. At least for where I'm concerned, I am looking forward to the single player at least as much, if not more, than the multiplayer. Uh, not because I'm down on the multiplayer or anything, but... I just really like single player experiences and I'm not an online avid gamer, so or an avid online gamer. So um, the single player for, for all intents and purposes looks like it's fantastic and uh, you're echoing that sentiment, Colin. So yeah. <laughs> I am excited about that. I endorse it. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening to this Nintendo Week Clip NWC. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more highlights and discussion videos from Nintendo Week Podcast, or subscribe to us on iTunes for weekly breakdowns of all your Nintendo news, discussion segments on subjects, games, and more, and tons of other features. Thanks for listening, and we will see you tomorrow with another NWC.